And of course, so when we say Hotep and Imaginator, Hotep, uh, Snut, and Snow, it feeds beyond to you, brothers and sisters. And uh, there will always be other variations in pronunciation that we're learning as we go along. My brother Kwame Pianke, I think, might be the very best person to assist us with the correct pronunciation. But in the meantime, we'll go with what? Uh, phonics. <laughs> what we know, what we've been taught, right? <laughs> Interesting program lined up for you as usual inside of the Africa Forum. A few things we want to do. We want to look back to go forward. And we also want to focus on some of the issues, the burning issues that uh, we will be facing as we continue into 2015 for the most urgent issues. One such is, I mentioned it last week that the World Health Organization has warned in a release, and uh, they've been doing this for a little while, that uh, globally we might be sliding into a post-antibiotic era in which common illnesses, illnesses like pneumonia will once again become feared killers and surgery will uh, come with heightened infection risks. So, as I told you last week, in its first investigation into antimicrobial resistance across the globe, the WHO reported startling findings about the extent to which viruses and bacteria have evolved to combat antibiotics. So they found resistance to the last resort treatment. Um, antibiotics used to treat urinary tract infections caused by E. coli and so on, resistance there. Um, in our parts of Africa, as many as 80% of all uh, infections aren't treatable by common antibiotic treatment. In the Americas, as much as 90% infections have now become resistant to antibiotics. And that uh, this proliferation of resistant infection strains comes at a grave cost. We want to examine that this morning. Ask ourselves, what is this grave cost? What is meant by antibiotic resistance? What is meant by post-antibiotic era? These are some of the questions that we'll be addressing this morning. Uh, very serious questions, very serious issue, and we are not we'll, don't, we're not we're not we want to create panic. But it seems, from all intents and purposes, that this is a very very serious one. So we're going to be speaking with consultant microbiologist Dr. Alice. And Nichols, Nicholson. She'll be joining me live in the studio. We think it was that important. Dr. Alison Nicholson thought it was that important that she came into the studio to uh, talk about this in the first instance, but also so that we can open the phone lines, take your comments, take your questions. Uh, what should we know about this latest phenomenon? Uh, how serious is it? How concerned should we be? Really, when you talk about a post-antibiotic era and you talk about uh, common diseases, once again becoming killers, uh, feared killers, and where surgery will come with heightened infection. What exactly are we talking about? Uh, last week we raised this issue. We also pointed out last week that the South African Health uh, Director General and if you remember that, uh, we mentioned Precious Matsoso, who said the emergence of superbugs immune to medicine is worse than AIDS. This was what she said, and she's a South African Health Director General. And this is how a lot of persons are looking at this. I've had conversations and discussions with a lot, uh, many, many persons, uh, healthcare professionals, uh, consultant microbiologists, uh, people who should know, people who are in the know, uh, people in, the, in academia, people in health, and so on. And what I'm getting is that this question of whether or not we're in a post antibiotic area, uh, antibiotic area, uh, is, is a serious one. As 
a matter of fact, the World Health Organization in April 30 this year, I mean last year, in the Daily Digest News, noted that antimicrobial resistance poses a major public health threat and may throw the global population into a post-antibiotic era marked by common infections and minor injuries becoming lethal. This is why we're looking at it this morning because we think we are part of the public education uh, process, our uh, corporate responsibility, our social responsibility, our moral obligation, our moral responsibility uh, dictates that we allow this space to be used, and this space meaning IRFM, to be used as part of the public education vehicle. Bring this to the attention of a nation once again. We've been talking about this since 2008. And you might recall, for those who listened uh, back then to Sex Wise on a Tuesday night, then we were talking about uh, gonorrhea and other sexually transmitted infections, and gonorrhea in particular, which there we understood at the time um, that there were a strain of gonorrhea that were resistant to the usual antibiotic um, treatment. And so we moved from there to 2012, uh, when the 2011, I think, when the World Health Organization uh, put out a report. And then again in 2012, we heard a little bit more about this. In 2015, uh, it seems to be on the lips of most healthcare professionals, uh, definitely from the WHO and definitely from uh, academia and other areas, from the health sectors, so that we are going to be talking about that this morning with Dr. Alison Nicholson. She'll be joining me in the studio to help us to understand that. We're looking back to last week. We had um, a representative, uh, the president of the National Craft Vendors, uh, Craft Traders Association, and uh, Melody Horton. Uh, lots, of, lots have happened since then. Uh, and we're going to be talking to her quickly this morning to find out what is the latest regarding the Harbour Street craft market. All right, also in the program this morning, we, we're, we're, we're still hoping to get to Primai in, in Ghana. And Shamar, you can tell me if you're, you've been able to reach Primai in Ghana this morning. So that we've been having some issues. But we intend to get to Prime Eye, uh, the program director at Radio Gold FM in Ghana. We want to talk about Obuno, Obuni Wawo, dead white man's clothes. We want to find out what's happening uh, in Ghana regarding the this burgeoning sector that's developing in in um in the in the in West Africa, and especially in Ghana, where the trade has taken off in such a way that quite a few things are happening, and we'll talk to uh, Primai about that when he comes on the line. Dead white man's clothes, Abuna, Abuna Wawo. All right, also we're looking forward this morning to February and March. This highway from celebrates 25 years, and... Uh, we come into Black History Month. We're going to be paying tribute as usual to some of our stalwarts. And this year, once again, February 1 is Dennis Brown's Day on Irie FM. And more than that, we're heading to Orange Street and Big Yard in partnership with Lego and the team. Bob Clark and his program Memories will be broadcasting live from Orange Street on February 1. Uh, we will have a panel discussion in the morning. Music throughout the day, Dee Brown, and then the live broadcast from Orange Street where there will be a massive tribute to Dennis Brown talk about that later on in the program. Also, Bob Marley, tribute to Bob Marley as usual during the month of February. February 6th, of course, uh, Bob Marley Day, the 70th anniversary or the 70th anniversary of the birth date <laughs> of Bob Marley. You would have been 70. February 6th this year. Uh, a few 
things are happening. One, definitely in nine miles on the sixth. Big, big, big event, massive event, nine miles in St. Anne. And then later on on the eighth, another big event as we broadcast live from nine miles. That's running African, the, the Africa Forum. We'll be traveling to nine miles on the sixth. And then again, with the entire IRFM team on the sixth. And then again on the eighth. Broadcasting live from Nine Miles in St. Anne as we pay tribute to Bob Marley. So joining me on the phone line this morning to talk about that, Captain uh, Wilbert Brown, a.k.a. Captain Crazy, Bob Marley Foundation's representative. And in the studio with me, a marketing executive here at IRFM, Nicholas Evans, will be joining me in the studio to talk about some of these issues, but also... Bob Clark and uh, Lego himself will be joining me on the phone lines to talk about Dennis Brown's tribute. Then uh, Peter Tosh, we're paying tribute to Peter Tosh. Also in the month of February, we will be traveling to Westmoreland. And uh, from there, we'll be jo joining on the phone lines Dave Tosh, son of Peter Tosh. And Mr. Rayon Simpson, principal of the Belmont Academy. And they will be joining me live on the phone to talk about the collaboration, the partnership between Belmont Academy, the schools in Westmoreland, and the Peter Tosh Memorial Gardens, along with, of course, IME FM. So we'll be in Westmoreland in February, inshallah, God's willing. Uh, from the Thursday, well, the Friday. Friday will be at the Belmont Academy. And then later on on the Sunday, uh, it's a live broadcast. So we are hoping to be there. Uh, Mungu Akimjalia. Mungu Akimjalia means God willing. And so we move from Arabic, which is inshallah. God willing, uh, to our tongue, our mother tongue. So, Mungu Akinjalia. Mungu Akinjalia. Uh, God willing. All right, so we have all of that and then some to get through uh, the news here and there. Today, we're hearing from Niger that there's an upheaval in Niger regarding uh, a response from Islamic Niger to the Charlie Hebdo uh, magazine publication over the last few days. The Africa Cup of Nations is on in Equatorial Guinea. That's happening in Mali too. We're watching what's happening in, in Mali. But uh, paying some strict attention and, uh, to the Africa Cup of Nations in Equatorial Guinea. Lots and lots happening, we've got that and more inside the program this morning. We're looking back as we go forward as usual. We're capturing our heritage and our identity because the intention is to liberate ourselves from the bonds of white supremacy. We're launching a cultural revolution to unbrainwash an entire people. We know that culture is an indispensable weapon in the struggle for freedom. Stay with us, we'll be with you until 10 o'clock this morning. We're also celebrating, and I should say that, uh, 54 years. We're celebrating uh, the birthday of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali uh, celebrated his birthday yesterday, at the same time that we are observing the uh, Patrice Lumumba. We are celebrating Patrice Lumumba. We're remembering the day on which he was assassinated because it was February 17, uh, 1961, 54 years ago, that he was assassinated. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we as the morning goes on. So a very very sticky one. It comes again to background of the massacre of uh, thousands of Nigerians by Boko Haram. It comes again to background of what seems to be the inaction and inability and unwillingness to act on the part of a Nigerian president, good luck, Jonathan. It comes again to background of a serious situation unfolding in Nigeria. The 16-year dominance of the People's Democratic Party in Nigeria will face its strongest test 
as the four biggest opposition parties have become their, uh, have overcome their ethnic, religious, and regional differences to form alliance. And the alliance, the alliance is the All Progressive Congress, the APC. The 2015 elections is expected to be the most competitive polls since Nigeria's return to democratic rule in 1999, as it sees for the first time the opposition parties from a strong coalition to challenge the PDP, which has ruled the country since its return to democratic rule. The election will bring into sharp focus the turbulence brought about by Boko Haram, the reduction in world oil prices and its effect on the country's economy, and unresolved issues of voter malpractices in the last elections, corruption, job creation, among other key areas. We're watching this very, very closely. Nigeria is descending once again. Sound of Bobby Marley from the album uh, Live, Bob Marley Live uh, Forever. Also, as we continue to talk about the elections in, on the continent of Africa that are due this year, Togo presidential elections are due in March 2015. The date has not yet been confirmed. The final but not the least elections on the AEP radar will be that of Togo. And we're watching that to see what's happening there. Uh, eight opposition parties. They have merged to form the ANC. That is the National Alliance for Change. That is in their bid to wrestle power from the ruling RTP. That is rally for the Togolese people. And the question is whether or not the RTP is stronghold in northern Togo. We'll see president, current president, pulling off a surprise against the reinvigorated opposition. The polls in Togo will be the country's sixth presidential election since the 1990s. Aside from that, you know, uh, the troubled South Sudan will be holding its first post-independent elections on June 13th. According to the Sudanese government, seven political parties have confirmed participation in the general elections. And as I told you last week, other countries that, have scheduled to, that are scheduled to hold elections in 2015, that's this year, they include Ethiopia, Benin, Tanzania, Mali, Burundi, Cote d'Ivoire, Burkina Faso, Guinea, Egypt, Niger, Equatorial Guinea, and Chad. We're going to be taking a quick break right after that. Then we go after this. Then we'll go to the phone lines to speak with Melody Horton, who is the president of the Craft Traders Association, and that's coming up right after this. Account of that, the vendors um, demonstrated at the, the, in front of the Sanchez Parish Council, which struck a meeting with us and the, and the mayor and, and the members of the parish council. Out of that meeting, we agreed that the shops would be inspected and given back to the, the traders. Um, those who are owing their rents, by the way, it's only seven persons who owe a month rent. Um, be supposed to make it payable before they would be able to operate the shops, mm -hmm. which we agreed to. And um, the, the, the contract, our attorney and their attorney will sit down and, and, and discuss the way forward. 
Okay, all right. So in the meantime, and the contract you referred to for those persons who um, didn't hear us last week is a contract that they, they, the parish council is asking the vendors to sign. And there is a clause in the contract that you, um, the, the craft traders, that you have said, no, that clause is not, it's unfair to us because of so many other reasons. And that clause was what, again, uh, Melody, what was that clause? That if um, you would three months rent your shop, would immediately repossess. Mm -hmm. And um, see, what, 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 what the, the contention at other street is, and, and I know it for the other cross markets here in Jamaica, it's not a problem that is only um, affecting other street. It's, it's a widespread problem. The unfair competition, the unfair distribution of the visitors when they get here. We are not certain that way because right now we have been sitting there for years and we have been crying out no business. When the business comes, it is directed directly to shops at Rosal and the Eighth Street. We are not seeing any business in the market and that is the real problem that we need a contract to be signed for, that, that the craft markets will enjoy business whenever a cruise ship or the visitors are here in the hotel. Nobody is coming up to the plate to the real problem because Andrea, if that problem is, is addressed, I am sure that that contract goes to three months. Nobody will be owing any, any rent for anybody who would want us to, so to actually is, sign a contract. So Melody, that is a real problem, a tangible real problem. Real problem. That has not, as, as far as the craft traders are concerned, with the Harbour Street or any other street, any other part right of Jamaica. Right across Jamaica. Right across Jamaica. But has not been, it has not been. Craft traders are left out. Mm -hmm. what, Nobody what is being coming done? up to take this bull by the horn to say, look, we cannot have this kind, because it is going to bring mayhem in the country. Somehow it's going to bring mayhem because you cannot have a group of people that is settled in a particular in a particular area, and, and the livelihood that they depend on it is is bringing in the visitors to, to the to their premises, and that is not done. Or are they going to live up to any kind of expectation? All right. So even and that's the fear that is that is the fear that is hanging over. Yes, you only hear the parish schools are saying, but it's only three thousand dollars or four thousand dollars. We are ashamed to know that we cannot come up with that. And anybody who, who, who is occupying anybody's place must know they have to pay. All right, so, so Melody, what I hear you saying that even though the problem at the Harbour Street craft um, market is being addressed in terms of one, uh, the lawyers talking to lawyers regarding the contract, two, yes. the, 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 the craft at the craft market, you were not forced out um, if no. you did not sign the contract, so that is positive development. That, uh, that is, this is particularly specific to the Harbour Street craft market, but the underlying problem of the unfair distribution of the inequity in terms of the, the ability of the craft traders to, to benefit from, from the, 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 the visitors who are coming in, whether it's from the, from the cruise ship or those who are coming in otherwise that yes. this is a real problem that has not been addressed, needs to be addressed, and how is, as a president though, national president, how is, how is this being addressed? How, how do you see this happening? Well, we have been, we have been um, talking to the Minister of Tourism for some time now. He has indicated to us that he is uh, putting together a craft council so that um, these things will be looked into. But um, a craft council, while it's in making, these are the things that are put in and that's what we are saying. Meanwhile, we were there uh, agreeing to wait on something like a craft council. Um, living off our chickens, uh, nothing at all. We living on our families abroad, our children who is working elsewhere, and, and sometimes God knows how we survive. We, we agreed to wait on a craft council to come up to see what a craft council would do for us. Meanwhile, the landlord is knocking us down that they want it, JPS want their money, NWC, and you name it. Mm -hmm. So well, meanwhile, a craft council is coming in. I think a short-term plan could be set in where 
somebody actually some powers that be because we are seeing um the, the, the parish homes go flexing their muscles and showing that they have powers and all this we are wondering if if the same connection cannot stand out for the people who put them into work for them right which is a very see that their lives are improved which is a very good point same power stand up for the people to say look these are my tenants, and, and if the business doesn't go there, I am afraid my place. Because if you remove them, if the contract one over to say three months, and you remove that person to be another person under the same condition, it is going to come back to that boiling point. All right, so in the meantime, or so I hear this, we're going to stay on this uh, melody. We're going to be keeping in contact with you also, with the parish council, with the mayor. In the meantime, though, right, for now, the, 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 the sword that was hanging over the heads of the traders at the a Harbour Street Craft Market. Right now, it might still be there, but it's not so low to you because you're still in the in the in, in the Harbour Street Craft Market, and you are you are actually talking with the landlord. You're talking with the parish council, which is really not the landlord, no, but the trustee, the person who's who keeping the thing in, in trust uh, for you and for your children and, and for the rest. Here, um, let me let me just, one final question, Melody. What happens if the uh, all right, so the lawyers are talking uh, about the yes. contract. Um, you're inside there. What happens if you, they can't come to an agreement? Well, I, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> I can't imagine it. I, 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 I am not sure because even after the lawyers talk, we have to take it back to the membership. And, and, and they have to agree too. It, it, it's not about me nor the lawyer, it's about the, the, the children and service for membership yes. that exists. So it's really a tough job job and they're a they real good fit there. Yes. What would happen if, if we don't see eye to eye? But we just trust God that the, the, the right thing will go into place and that all, all will be comfortable. All right. Uh, please keep in touch with us. Please let us know. Um, give us a blowback. And, and, and the off of the other street and the crowd vendors here in Jamaica. You know, I would like to all ask you say thanks to you, Andrea, for um, having it really help because it really brought it out to the world. The world was on top of this. People were calling from all over to yeah. say what, what a shame, what is happening. You know, thank you, and, thank, you uh, Mel thank you, Melody. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Victory is certain. The struggle continues, but victory yeah. is certain. Yeah. Right, my sister, walk good. The essence of power is the ability to define someone's reality. That's the name of the organism that causes gonorrhea. Um, is actually appearing to win the dubious distinction of being the first organism to be uh, to, to be ineradicable by antibiotics. What does that mean? Meaning, meaning that because of the problems we're now having with Neisseria gonorrhea, we are running out of options and it will probably become the first bacterium that has that becomes untreatable by antibiotics, which is a serious problem. Right. So for example, we had a number of options that we could use to treat um, gonorrhea. Now the organism has become resistant to those antibiotics so now we're left with probably one very reliable antibiotic something called keftriaxone um, but the, there have been reports of increased tolerance of the organism to this antibiotic it's not resistant to it yet but it's, it's becoming tolerant it's becoming too comfortable in the presence of the antibiotic no that's probably anti already but how, how, how does it happen okay Okay, so for each antibiotic that has been developed by the pharmaceutical company, they, it has a specific mechanism. So, for example, the, yeah, let me just go into this a little bit. So, for example, the, the antibiotic is one that disrupts cell wall. In order to do that, it has to target a particular receptor on the cell wall. So, it's acting, it's disrupting that particular receptor, creating its effect, and then killing the bacterium. So, after a while, the bacterium um, there's a change in the receptor and so the same antibiotic goes in searching for the particular receptor that it's supposed to act on it's no longer there the bacterium is now using a different receptor mm -hmm. so it's not it can't be killed 
Wow. And, and gonorrhea uh, in particular, which would seem to be one of the vexing diseases, <laughs> infection. Yes. Um, you're saying that there's only one, one antibiotic now that is proving to be more or less healthy. Okay, no, no. Let, let me clarify that. For example, in Jamaica, we still, oh, the Neisseria gonorrhea isolates that we have still are f still sensitive to a wide range of antibiotics. What we're trying to highlight is that in other parts of the world, we're having isolates mm. that have become resistant. Mm. Now, once you have the inheritance of this kind of resistance, it can spread fairly easily, and it means that it's a warning that this will happen. Mm. So you try to take precautions in terms of your prescribing practices and so on. All right, and, and so, and you, you'd also mentioned before um, UTI, yes. urinary tract infection, and as, as one of the problems, uh, one to also. Uh, with that in Jamaica in terms of treatment? Well, it's, it, well in Jamaica, we, we're still trying to do surveillance, and at University Hospital, we monitor our organisms fairly closely, and some of the common organisms are showing resistance to some of the commonly used antibiotics. But in terms of being resistant to all antibiotics, we still have options left. But the point is, what is happening elsewhere is a warning signal for us to be careful. And, and some of these words, I'm listening to them carefully that you're using in terms of warning signals and so on. What are the, the consequences? What are the dangers of antibiotic of, resistance? Of resistance, yeah. Okay, well, when you have antibiotic resistance, for example, you're in hospital or you're admitted to hospital with a particular infection. If it is that you have a pneumonia, then you might be treated with a regular antibiotic. But it's not going to work if it's caused by a resistant organism. It means, therefore, that there is increased risk, increased possibility that you might die or the, the doctor might realize that this antibiotic which normally works is no longer working and then has to change antibiotics. So you're looking at increased costs because you now have to go on more than one um, course of antibiotics. You'll be in hospital for a longer period of time because it takes longer to find the appropriate antibiotic to treat you. So that's increased hospitalization, say increased costs, etc. Mm -hmm. Increased morbidity takes longer to get better and increased mortality, you might die from the infection. Mm -hmm. Simple infection that would have been treated in a... Right. A, you know, exactly. Wow. Uh, do we know what, what, is the, what are the main reasons? For, for, these, for, for this situation that we're now facing? Um, yes, there has been an overuse of antibiotics. And while I think that perhaps the introduction of antibiotics into um, the practice of modern medicine is probably one of the greatest gifts that we've gotten um, from God, I believe now that we are in danger of, squand of having squandered that gift. So having overused it, we are now running out. Because the more you expose the bacteria to the antibiotics, um, the more you select for some trait that they have that causes this and so on. Uh, and, and which region would Jamaica be in? And how, you know, how soon are we expecting? We're in 2015 now. Um, you're saying that there's cause for concern. How soon are we expecting what's happening in the worst case scenario? if nothing is done. Well, remember, but well, let's start from the back. Remember that the world is a global village. So it really doesn't take long for what's happening elsewhere to be here. So, for example, a patient who comes here from India or some other place where they might be having a particular... I mentioned India specifically because they have a particular problem with a, a, a certain type of resistance. Um, um, and that has been recognized. Um, or you're coming from the USA with, a, with MRSA. You, you come here with MRSA, you, can, um, you take that organism with you. Mm -hmm. So when you have new mechanisms of resistance emerging that have been identified, it really doesn't take long for it to get somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we actually had a case uh, um, at the university hospital where we had a patient coming in from another country who had a particular organism. And fortunately for us, we had um, isolated the patient because of the possible diagnosis. And so when we identified um, the organism from, one of the, from the patient's um, sample, we were happy to find out that we, the patient had already been isolated, so the organism did not get a chance to spread. Mm -hmm. But had we not isolated the patient because of the possible diagnosis, mm -hmm. another um, completely unrelated diagnosis, then the possibility existed that the, that the organism could have spread 
to vulnerable patients mm-hmm. because patients who are in hospital are vulnerable. Mm-hmm. And we talked about the consequences before and the dangers um, in, in terms of for public health. And that's some of the questions I'm going over. I'm going over because I, miss, I need to understand a bit more, and I'm quite sure our listeners too, in terms of the, the, the dangers for, to public health. To, to, you talk about somebody coming in and that this, this could have spread if you hadn't isolated um, in that situation. So, so the dangers include that, as you just talked about, but also what, for public health generally, what are we dealing with? Um, those would have greater implications for the patient who is lying in a hospital bed already ill, um, having lines and tubes and so on, right, yes. providing transport for the organism. So some of the organisms that we're talking about, especially bacterial agents, tend to have more implications for the persons, mm-hmm. persons whose immune systems mm-hmm. are um, compromised. Mm-hmm. So that's the first thing we need to, to know. Yes. What, what, what should that helps to reduce the panic? Yes, yes, it does. What, what should we be doing individuals? Let me start with the yes. doctors first. The doctors first. Yes. Okay, well, as the doctors need to be aware of this, and I'm sure they are aware of this problem. And as a result, uh, modify antibiotic prescribing practices. Um, so it's important to try to restrict the use of antibiotics to what you think are bacterial infections. Now the problem here, or the challenge here for the doctor, is that there are some infections that you are not sure whether this is bacterial or viral. For example, a sore throat, most times it's viral, but it could be bacterial. Some of your ear infections, etc. So the challenge is, what do you do when you have a patient in front of you that has an infection, similar symptoms, very similar, could be viral, could be bacterial. So the challenge is to spend a little bit more time using the diagnostic aids that you have to see if you can call it whether this is bacterial or viral. And if it's viral as much as possible, well, not as much as possible. If you think it's viral, then do not use an antibiotic because antibiotics do not have any effect on viruses. And so that the, the patient also knows, the individual has a responsibility to know what should we do. Right, that's very important. Um, many doctors will tell you that patients, and I myself was in private practice, patients will come in and request antibiotics. They will tell you that their neighbor got antibiotics, had the same thing, got antibiotics and, and felt better. They would even bring their neighbor's antibiotics to show you what their neighbor got and therefore please prescribe this. So it would be good if the public would stop pressuring doctors for antibiotics. Um, the other thing, other, there are other things too. If you get a course of antibiotics, you need to complete it. Antibiotics, this is different from pain you do have infections that we can die from, whereas before we could easily just take a course of antibiotics, even antibiotics by mouth and recover from oh. them. Oh. It's the worst thing that ever happened. Well, um, wow. Well, let's go back to the phone line. Hello, good morning. Hey, yes. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I am a rheumatic patient. I was dying years old. And I was on antibiotics, but the doctor now I'm um, 40 years old, they said I can stop taking. So, could um, I hear what they do for that? Sorry, I didn't hear the last part of that. You said the doctor said that you can stop taking it, and what? Yes, the doctor said um, I could stop taking it now. Okay. All right. Was, I'm saying, yes. I I when I was nine I have rheumatic fever, sore throat. They said it's caused from sore throat. So now I'm forty. They said I could stop taking. Right. Then, right. Um. Yes. Well, I'm sure your doctor would have evaluated all the conditions associated with what you just said, and put a streptococcus, which is the cause of. Uh, Acute pharyngitis, and okay. in a small percentage of persons. Okay, I'm going to open this. Okay, sure, sure. Yes. 
encouraged to come back and to try and see if they can find new ideas, new ways of approaching this, then, you know. But I suppose that they will know because now, once again, there's a market for it. Because if you were in a, in a, in a, in a period of, of relative calm and stability, then one could see that. But I suppose now that you have all this resistance um, being developed, it's just that the lack of vision, probably. I don't know. But remember, what, too, what, that whatever they do, the organism is still going to find a way to develop resistance. So, again, this, you're talking about developing a drug that has a limited shelf life. Yeah, okay. You know, I was reading, uh, and, and I mentioned here last week, that um, there was a support out about um, uh, uh, soil, getting antibiotics on soil. Yes. Is, it, is it credible? I'm going to hold back on that one before, since you're ahead of me. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's credible, but the, the, the challenge with that, I mean, so that offers some hope. That's a bright spark on the horizon, yes. you know, the possibility that they've found another source that they might be able to use to develop antibiotics. So now they have to court the pharmaceutical companies because it costs up to $800 million or more U.S. Mm -hmm. to, to bring a new product to the market. Mm -hmm. And it can take up to 10 years or more. So we're really looking, we're still looking at a gap, mm -hmm. even if that works out. And then it, what, what hit me when I was reading that was whether or not it's going to be a situation like the bauxite thing where, you know, you find the, the, the country where the soil is and then you dig out the dirt to make antibiotics. Just thinking ahead. Yeah. But, uh, let, let's take another call. Um, hello, caller, Hotel. Uh, morning. Hi, go ahead for Dr. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Andrea and Darling. How are you? I am doing very well. How are you? Long time in the talk to you. Good to have you. Go ahead for Dr. Yes. Nicholson. Yes. Yes. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Um, what I want to say, Africans are in fear of the here. Because the day when we used to go and pick herbal medicine, they're no longer doing it here. They want this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in believing herbal medicine. But it, whenever I have a problem, I just pick up herbal medicine and I just get myself healed. For, for instance, you see, uni, uni is one of the greatest herbal medicine I ever seen on this island of Jamaica. Because I have a problem already, I use uni. And in three to four days time, I'm seen. What, what, what problem was that? I, I don't really want to. Okay, all right. So all I can do is that. Way. And I've given it to people who have problems like um, urinal infection. And, and it's curious? And it helps them, they get better. Okay. They tell me they get better, they heal, cure, and get better. So we right. now have to go back to our herbal medicine. Right now, I want to tell Africans, go forward to our herbal medicine. Thank you so much, and, my and, sister. And, Thank you so much, my sister, for that, all right? And, and get ourselves, and, and get ourselves healed and get her. And, 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 and another thing again, I, I, my, my thought on it is to and there before I go, mm -hmm. I, this, this thing, it comes from some of the food that is coming in this island that we're eating to. It comes from some of the food too. The resistance? Yes, yeah, some of the food that we're eating are right. Well, that is true. That is true. We don't have to start from it, but we know the GM foods are, um, you know, in our, on our shelves. Well, thank you so much, Mrs. Joy. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay, uh, still taking a telephone call. I suppose we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get there, and we have to get there because if we're saying that there is resistance developing, and, and it is uh, bacteria developing resistance to antibiotics, I think is there gonna be uh, do you do you envisage a, a gap period? Because if the I'm thinking so, I'm thinking that we're in danger of a gap. So the fact that this bright spark has come on the horizon is reason for hope, but I still think that we need to do everything that we can to address how fast that problem. Um, occurs right here in Jamaica mm -hmm. because I, I foresee a gap. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, 974-5079-5051-5043 and 1-888-991-4152 are the numbers to call. And just before we go to the break, the brother call about the event on the 15th in, in uh, Maypen and I gave a date earlier of the 15th of a tribute to Jacob Miller. My date was actually wrong. All right, it was my date that was wrong. So we're going to fix that shortly. All right, take a quick break. Better to be home and garden and start with rapid food values. Visit any location on his line for a wide range of pain, tires, lighting, fuel, appliances, and hard work building supplies. Be sure to find what you need. Rapid food value, everything you need to build, renovate, and decorate. The time by rapid food value is... Now, 12.30.
12 minutes after 8 o'clock, as we go back to ten, uh, uh, as we go back to the telephone line, so take your telephone calls for Dr. Alison Nicholson, consultant microbiologist, looking at the post-antibiotic era and uh, looking also at our own responsibilities, what we need to do here uh, on the island. Hello, caller, good morning. Yes, greetings, Mr. Angela. Greetings, my brother. Listen, yeah, man, um, we are saying, we know that it, a lot of antibiotics is used um, in the rearing of animals. How does that affect um, immunity in humans? You know, just does, it, does it cause us to be, um, does it cause us to adapt to it, you know? Uh, uh, All right, go ahead. That's an extremely important point. Perhaps a little bit more than half of the antibiotics used in some countries is used in animals. And it does lead to resistance. And yes, some of the resistance problems that you have emerging in animals cross over to humans. So, for example, you know, it's important to be doing research so you can connect the dots. And I know that the emergence of a particular organism started somewhere in Europe and it was actually connected to the chicken that the um, person had eaten. So they actually got samples from the particular food and they found the resistant organism. So, um, what I'm saying is that if, if antibiotics are used irresponsibly in animal husbandry, then yes, it will promote resistance. Now, we know again that you do use antibiotics there, but that has to be looked into. How it's used, how much of it is used is important, and it's something that needs to be looked into because it can promote resistance, and yes, the resistance that you get there can cross over into humans. So that's an excellent point. Mm -hmm. uh, so from, where you're, from where you're sitting, uh, Dr. Dr. Nicholson, uh, and for the general population listening, what, if there's two or three things that you wanted us to know, you know, regarding all of it, what would that be? Okay, I would want you to know that as useful as antibiotics are, they can actually promote resistance if they are not used properly. So, one, do not pressure your doctor for antibiotics. Two, complete the course of antibiotics that you get when you do get it. Do not start antibiotics and leave it com um, incompletely taken. And three, do not share your antibiotics with other persons. Mm -hmm. You know, that second point you made about completing the course, I think it's really critical. I, I, I think a lot of people really don't finish because they feel better, you know, you're not thinking like a doctor, like, well, what the bacteria not done, you're not dead yet. <laughs> Let me just put it on because I feel much better. So I think you're talking to a majority of the nation when you say complete your antibiotics course. Yes, it takes discipline because the truth is you'll feel better after about two to three days. But remember what I said, the distinction between feeling better and getting rid of all the organisms. Uh, and just to reiterate, uh, and that's because we're coming to just uh, about uh, seven minutes left in the program, just to reiterate, for so those, for the, the common diseases, the common uh, problems that we currently have, what are some of those problems that have developed uh, resistance? antibiotics. Okay, for example, I mentioned urinary tract infection, and everybody knows what that is. You start, you know, you have increased frequency of pass in the urine associated with burning, etc. And recently, um, again, we don't want to cause too much panic, but I think it's important to, you know, put some substance beside, behind what, what I'm saying. Recently, we had a patient with a urinary tract infection and the organism that you know, that we found from the urine was resistant to probably over 20 antibiotics that we tested against it. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That, that is big trouble. So um, that is an infection. Something like your pneumonia, um, the organism that is most commonly implicated, we have resistance here, not as much as in the, in, in the U.S. and in the U.K., for example, or, or the same organism here would probably would show resistance in about 10% of cases, whereas in the U.S. you will have resistance in about 40 to 50%. Mm -hmm. So we, we are not as bad, but we have to be careful because, you know, we could get there. Of course, in, the, in, in other places they use a lot of antibiotics and use far more antibiotics than we do or can because of resources. 
So in a sense, because they have access to it and they use it a lot, they'll be seeing more resistance in many organisms. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of scrambling in the in the health sector among um, well, at your level? To, to address some of these, you know, how are you? Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, right now we are in the middle of um, <clears throat> doing, a re doing some survey across the island, and this is a collaborative effort between the Ministry of Health and the University of the West Indies. Um, at the University of the West Indies, we have a cross-faculty team partnering with the Ministry of Health, and we're actually doing a national survey. So we encourage our listeners, if you're, uh, you know, if uh, somebody comes to ask you questions about antibiotic resistance, please help us to help you, you know, cooperate so we can get the questionnaires done. We're doing a survey also among the doctors. The doctors have been very cooperative, and so we're going across the island just to basically establish the baseline knowledge and attitude of persons across the island and then we're developing a campaign so sometime later this year you should see an antibiotic campaign to basically sensitize the entire population to get everybody playing his or her part and then we'll have interventions you know um, to help persons remain within certain guidelines um, in terms of the use of antibiotics and then we'll evaluate these interventions so we are working the Ministry of Health University of the West Indies working together to address the problem and is this a global response? It is a global response, you know, actually in places like Europe, many countries of Europe, they have what is known as an antibiotic resistance day. On that day, the media is, is full of antibiotic resistance talk. They have newspaper inserts. They have interviews. They have banners across the street just to get the whole population buying into how you should use antibiotics. As I said before, it would be a tragedy if you did not take antibiotics uh, when you needed them. But the problem we're addressing Thing is taking them when you don't need them and taking them irresponsibly, going on the black market and buying them somewhere else apart from in the pharmacy, etc. So in terms of the public education, what would you want to see media do? Oh, certainly, well, we would want more interviews like this. For example, we would want to have um, ads, you know, regular ads um, on radio and TV, um, probably playing out scenarios that would help persons to be able to relate to what they should or should not do. As it is now, this is, you know, just creeping into, into people's consciousness that this, there's something like this happening that we should be aware of. But you know when you have this kind of a global response and um, uh, information coming from government and so on, you also have suspicion and you also have um, resistance at, at that level to, and ambivalence. Um, uh, are you seeing any of that right now? And, and if so, how, how? Not so far. Not so far. Um, we, well, we've started with the doctors, and the doctors, as I said before, have been um, very cooperative. Um, we will know what's happening from the patient side. We haven't really had that interaction yet, mm -hmm. so we will know what happens there. Okay. All right. Well, obviously, quite a lot of work to do. Uh, we just 10 minutes to go in the program, well, a little bit under 10 minutes. Uh, we, I know we have callers holding, and I don't want to do this to a caller, so we'll try and get in two or three uh, callers um, tomorrow. So we'll take those quickly. Uh, let's go to the phone lines. Hold it. Yes, good morning, my brother. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, doctor. Good morning. Yes, thank you. What do you know about this, right? against the bacterial life. Okay, all right, and I want to go on to say that it is, it, is, it, is, it is very important for the population to start using back coconut oil. That research has shown that it's antiviral, antifungal, antiviral, and antibacterial. Okay, all right, yes, I, I have heard and about again, that. And again, and again, we all know the research has shown that coconut oil is rich in lactic acid. Yes. And aging that is very useful in well, attacking well, viruses, bacteria, well, let's say this and other germs. Let's say this. My brother, let's say this. My brother, let's say this. Sure. Let's say this. All right, thanks for calling. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Doc. No, no, I'm saying I've heard about the coconut oil, but again, I have, I'm not able to recommend it as a mode of treatment. Okay. Um, John Tikush on Twitter says, herbal medicine is the best thing to mankind, no matter what some people will say. And, uh... All right, uh, we, we'll get to the others. Uh, we'll take two more calls, 974-5079-5051-5043 and 1-888-991-4152. Two final calls in 
for for Dr. Uh, Nicholson on this tomorrow if you've got those. All right, uh, well, let's, let's take that one. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello. Yes, go ahead. Good morning. Morning, Andrew. Yes. Doc. Good morning. Good morning. I've no, I've listened to news the other day and heard that this chicken gona have us. After effect, that right now the doctor is not even recommending the pain tablets as usual. You're going to talk some more antibiotics principle. But this disease, how are we going to deal with it? I think it's a little bit of a problem. Well, I don't know if we have time to answer all of that, but if you can answer that sentence. Thanks for calling. All right, because when you caused by a virus, so again, that's a completely different um, infection from the one we're talking about, the ones we're talking about. You're talking about bacterial infections this morning because these are the ones we use antibiotics for. And I'm well aware of the challenges that chikungunya has posed for us, and not only for us, for everywhere that it has caused a problem, it, you know, you do have these long-lasting after effects. So the uh, immune system, uh, what, it, and this will be a final uh, question. I'll come back to that in a little while. Let's see this final call. Final call. Hello, good morning. Hi, Lee, I am Miss Andrea. Oh, to my brother, quickly. Hi, Lee, I am Wagwan. Yeah, man, give thanks. What, you're the final call. Go ahead, quick, quick. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Please up the program, and Miss Andrea. You have a question for Dr. Nicholson? Eh? You have a question for Dr. Nicholson? Yeah, yeah. Man, go ahead, quick. We don't have much time. Yeah. Mr. Doc? Yes, good morning, sir. Yes, ma. We have a friend, you see, ma, a bacterial. Yes. So, you must be every time I'm bending down, I'm feeling a pain crossing the line. Uh huh. Yeah. So, we don't know that now. Boy, it would be impossible to diagnose that without seeing the patient and examining him. You know, that symptom could apply to so many different causes that it's almost impossible to tell you one particular cause for that. Right. I said, tell your friend to see the doctor, all right? Go to the clinic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm the Yes. I run Starby, you know, me I'll give up the program straight. <laughs> Thank you, Starby. Give thanks, all right? I, 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 all right, give thanks. I, I, okay. I think, uh, all right. I, I just wanted to go into the, the, in terms of the immune system and what we can do otherwise, because obviously, how, how do you get these, some of these diseases? Are they connected anyway with the, with the immune system? Well, if, if you have a problem with the immune system, then the infection would be worse. But, um, you know, a lot of these infections can be transmitted. They're maybe airborne. If you feel better, you, you left one day, are you, you finished your course? No, I know, I, I know that if you start taking antibiotics, you take it until it's finished. Okay. Whether you feel better or not. But I can't recall having had to take any antibiotics. In, you in know, recent it's time. not bored. Not bored. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, actually. Not bored. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I don't want to have to take any. Right, so this is a serious business we're, we're, we're facing, you know, understanding that, you know, um, we're in a post-antibiotic era. Mm -hmm. Ordinary common diseases and common infections. Are resisting. Resisting, and you could, if you go back, you're dying from, you, you could die mm -hmm. from common infections that you could have just taken. Sure, antibiotic. antibiotic and, you yeah. Know. You know what, but I have not spoken, all the microbiologists and consultant microbiologists and medical doctors and healthcare professionals that I've spoken to about this have said the one thing. It is very serious. Mm -hmm. Because um, my little knowledge tells me that as you go like this, bam, antibiotic is prescribed. Mm -hmm. So, Are you asking for it? And the doctor? Yes, because people have certain mm -hmm. things. They just call the doctor and say, send on some antibiotic for me. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And, and I should have asked um, um, doc, there, Dr. Nicholson about children and antibiotics now, but we, we're going to continue this conversation uh, because even with children, we're, we're seeing that. Because uh, what, 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 what um, if, if, if the, um, the microbes are the, the, the whatever the they bacteria. are, the bacteria are resisting the antibiotics now. And as I heard her say, the pharmaceuticals are not investing in it. Right. Then we are going to have to find some something else to fill the gap there. That's what I'm saying. I mean, in and the, and it can't be buckle. No, it has to be a a, um, a process where you you go after something to fight. Go after finding something to 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 um to fight against these yes. bacteria. And I would say, you know, it's it urgent. 
So what are you going to check the moringa? Check the ganja, mm-hmm. check the noni. I mean, and, and, all, and all these things. Yeah. Maybe they are working already, you know, but they have not isolated it that right, way. Right, right. Like so, right. so they might be very well doing what the antibiotic um, should be doing or is doing. Mikey, conscious at call just now to say that it's an excellent opportunity for us, for, for Jamaica, for academia, for scientists to develop our own thing now, in mm-hmm. our own universities, in our own labs, to create our own, uh, in our, within our own spaces. You know? it, 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 is even, it is even more so now. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Because yes. I am sure we have the remedy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's just to isolate it. Yes, true. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. Did Muta Boka leave? You know, I said Muta come here a while ago. It, no. Muta, you know, I'm talking. Yeah, yes, I saw Bob Muta. He was there, you know. Okay. He peeped through the door and then, it, you know, seeing come back all now. And that's showing coming it's, from, so it's from Rebel pa- Salute. It's eh? Muta pass outside eh? Most motor was available salute, you know. I don't I, I, I pass I know Big A was out there. Right. But and, and, and some other persons, but I'm not sure what passed. Motor out. might have been out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was hustling to get here yes. and Were you at Rebel well, really? <laughs> Were you at Rebel Salute last night? No, no I wasn't. Because it like it just done, you know. If it done it because we see select a princess a tweet say, um Sizzler was on stage just three minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> That means they're out there in the sun. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh-huh. Anyway, anyway, what good, my Bertrand? All right, thank you. Thanks, yeah. Eight minutes now after nine o'clock, and in this segment of the program, going to be looking ahead, looking forward to Black History Month, Reggae Month, uh, Healthy Lifestyle Month, and all of that. Nicholas Evans is joining me in the studio in his capacity as a marketing executive at Irie FM. We're going to be hitting the streets. Again, we're going to be talking to Bob Clark and Lego. You know, Robert, Bob Clark and Lego will be broadcasting live from Orange Street, Big Yard. Dennis Brown birthday. <laughs> right. I know you'll be there. Come. I know you love Debra. <laughs> right. and, and we have just so much more that's happening. So just to say good morning uh, to my colleague, marketing executive here at IRFM, Nicholas Evans. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Kabu. How are you doing? I'm good. Right. Nick, um, I'm very excited about uh, the, the plans for Black History Month, Reggae Month, and also for Healthy Lifestyle Month. We're not going to talk much about Healthy Lifestyle Month this morning, but definitely about Black History Month. Definitely. So um, we have like a full rollout, um, an entire month of activities. Um, we are on the road all over the island, east, west, north, and south. Mm-hmm. I mean, so everybody will get a piece of it. We start out in Kingston, the capital city, with Dennis Brown. Um, Dennis Brown, February 1, and Bob Clark and Lego will be in Big Yard, Orange Street, that is, I think. Um, and we will celebrate the life and work of Dennis Brown. So all who just hear Dennis Brown music and want to know more about Dennis Brown, you know, you can listen up on Sunday, February 1, um, live from Big Yard. People would have par with Dennis Brown, so to speak, who would have worked with him and all of that. We'll, we'll, we'll share the experiences. I'm um, telling you from, you know, they used to put him on um, little crate. <laughs> um, I mean, to stand, yeah. I mean, for him to sing because he was too short, <laughs> you yeah. know. No, we're, get, we're, getting, we're getting Bob Clark and Lego on the phone um, as we speak. Um, but, but you're right about the people who were there from the, from, the, from the beginning, who knows him personally, that's Dee Brown, knowing music, playing music. And, and we're starting in the morning um, on Running Africa in the Africa Forum with a panel discussion about um, Dennis Dee Brown. Dee Brown yes. yeah. And that is that's February one. Definitely, and um, February eighth, it, it, it's Bob Marley celebration in Nine Miles, his birth and resting place, final resting place. We will be up there in Nine Miles Centre, you know, to to celebrate the life and work of Bob Marley as well. And we're there twice, aren't we? Twice, because because we're there February um, the, the sixth, um, mm-hmm. where the, the 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 Bob Marley, the Nine Mile um. <coughs> complex will will be having a grand celebration up there as well lots of stuff from mm-hmm. about eight in the morning to the understand maybe the next morning you know all the all night stuff you know we'll be there um then and then we'll be there Rolling again out the, 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 the africa forum, forum team on the on the eighth um for 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 um another celebration um for the legendary bob marley 
All right, we have on the phone lines uh, Lego along with uh, Bob Clark. Bob Lego, morning. Yeah. Morning. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, greetings, greetings. Morning. We're very, we're, we're very excited, Lego, um, here at IRFM about the partnership with yourself and the team who will be celebrating uh, D Brown on his birthday on February one. Sure. Yes, yes, give us give us an idea, uh, Lego. What, what was your relationship with D Brown first of all? Virgin. See it there. Virgin, and I just say this is some road work for him. You know, in the early days, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a tour with him and thing. Yeah. In 77. And so, and, and, and was Virgin killing and very good Virgin, close, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. always come to you if you had to say, well, let go, I'm a bigger brother, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, bigger brother. And, that, that was it, good, good virgin, you know? Yeah, and, and Lego, and, and we're, we're going to hear much more from you as we get closer. Well, we just have about a week to go, but we're going to hear from you again okay. uh, very shortly in, in regards okay. to, to, that, to that relationship. But give us an idea now of what is going to happen um, at Orange Street on, on February 1 from, from your perspective. What are you planning? Yeah, we're going to, we're going to um, the plane, Dennis Brown, like we did last year with Stairgrass on. Yeah. This year we're going to have Soul Zone and so on. Right? Yes, you're going to try member then. Dean, Dean, I'm going to have an area with Bob. Yeah, Dean. Yeah, I'm Dean Fraser. We're coming from Reggae. We're coming from... From Reggae Salute, Dean Fraser. In the body area, man. Yes. Yeah. So, what we're going to have is that the son playing Dennis Brown too and celebrating like a picture, you know? Yes. Because that is the community where he came from, Aaron Street. He was born and grew up on Aaron Street, you know? And a lot of his friends and... Because since we moved the show to the to down 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 to the down to the waterfront, we want to keep keep the community going, you know, on Beach Street, which is Orange Street. Yes. So that is it, you know. So we want to keep Dennis going alive because the people keep asking for it. So last year yes. we kept this kept and they, they, they keep asking back for it this year, you know. All right, and Bob Clark is also on the line. Um, yes. b- Bob, the, the, the memories are coming live um, on, on the first from from Orange Street. Um, as, as I asked Lego, your own relationship with Dennis Brown, you knew you also knew Den- Dennis Brown very well. Yes, yeah, Dennis. Dennis. Well, well, Lego, yeah. Lego, yeah, man, Bob is here, man. Go ahead, Bob. Okay. Yeah, Dennis. Dennis was a great friend, you know. In fact, I wrote his second hit song. Um, Which one? We used to. We, if I follow my heart. Oh, you mean you want that, Bob? Yeah. S- sing a little piece of me. If I follow my heart, <laughs> I'm going to love you. Well, you know, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sing a little piece of me. Love it is You know, elements, man. We love it, Bob. We love it. But guys, what's my birthday? You know, we used to do a lot of things together. You go country together, walk up and down Studio One. Yes. We were based in Studio One at that point, you know, because they had left the, uh, Derek, Ma- Derek Harriet's place, where he was supposed to have recorded his first song. Yes. But, uh, yeah. No Man is an Island. Mm-hmm. But we were at Studio One, based at Studio One. And, um, well, the one that he did for Derek Harriet was the first one, but the first one released was No Man is an Island, the mm-hmm. Don't Be. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. No Man is an Island. It was recorded it was for Don't Be. Released. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, right, right. It's the first time for Derek as a card artist, but the first song to be released was No Man's an Island. No Man's an Island, right. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, uh, we used to uh, walking up and down. You know, there were days when nothing was happening, really, and you were hoping for something to happen. You was my pal. Mm-hmm. We used to, the was like one of the areas that we used to hang out with the Heptones, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I remember one day we were walking down Brentford Road and I noticed he was drifting a little bit behind me, you know? Yes. And to my left, and I was saying, what up to Dennis? And I looked around and I seen him almost behind me. And I looked to my right and I heard a man say, where's the school to you, sir? It was his father, you know. <laughs> and I heard the little class, say, yes, daddy. <laughs> so I realized, oh, oh that is one man, my father, whatever, so yeah. Um, but we were, we were great, great friends, yeah. you know? All right, well, we're going to talk about that next week, I'm quite sure, and, 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 and right throughout IRFM across the week. Um, but s- tell us a little bit about what our listeners and what persons who we're inviting to be with us at Orange Street on the first can expect from Bob Clark memories that's going to be there um, broadcasting back live. Uh, on as, usual, as usual, as usual, we'll try to keep the standard high. And, 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 and,
I'm 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 back to some of my childhood friends, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to interact with folks. When his, when his mother died and his father leave him and gone, and his father was an actor, you know? Yeah. And he used to see a lot of the people. I mean, he used to from house to house, but the people love him. <laughs> and then he came from, from a family of entertainers, you know? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, you know what, Bob? You see, just listening to you on Lego tells me, just listen, it, it giving us a vibe of what this is going to be on, on February 1, you know. And I hear Lego producing a program for you already, you know, Bob, so you can't stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear him. I hear him. No, Bob. We're doing a proper, Bob. But that's the way they're doing a set track on Lego, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We know the thing for a long time, you know. True, true. Yeah. So we're looking forward to it. We're just giving our listeners a teaser to let them know, you know, um, we're p in partnership um, with Lego Memories Broadcasting Live uh, from Orange Street on February 1. We're inviting everybody to be out. We have a panel discussion here at IRFM in the morning. Uh, Big A will be playing deep brown music throughout the day. And then later on in the, in the afternoon, Bob Clark takes it live from Orange Street along with Lego. The music of Dennis Brown continuing into the night. Lego, Bob, thanks very much. Yes, okay. Right. Have a yes, nice man. one. Yeah, man. Talk next week. You too. Save travel, travel Lego. Okay, easy. All right. Yeah, Nick. Yeah, I mean, just listening to both of them, it sounds really exciting. I mean, I've always tuned in to, to Bob's tribute on air um, annually for Dennis Brown. It's always an interesting tribute. I mean, we are the nar he narrates and plays songs um, accordingly, and you know I'm just imagining what it will be like live outside. I mean the spiritual home of Dennis Brown, yeah, Big man. Yard. Big Yard. We we'll take a quick break. We we'll, we'll, we'll be back when we come back. We're talking to who is it? We're talking to. We, we, we should be talking with um, someone from the Nine Miles, um, the Bob Marley. Um, okay. Yes. Quick break. The essence of power is the ability to define someone's reality and have them live according to that definition as though it is a definition of their own choosing. All right, we're back with you inside of the Africa Forum. A marketing executive here at IRFM, Nicholas Evans, in the studio with me as we look ahead to Black History Month and to Reggae Month and some of the activities that we'll be rolling out come February. February 1, we're hitting the road, starting with the celebrations for D-Brown. Oh, yes. Um... And immediately after, um, just about another week, we'll be nine miles sent on. All right, we lost um, Mr. Wilbert, so if we could um, get him back on the line. But go ahead, Nick. Yes, we'll be nine miles sent on um, the, the 8th and, of course, the 6th as well. Um, Mr. Wilbert Brown will tell us, Captain Crazy, I mean, as he's called, will tell us more about the 6th. But, of course, we'll be in um, nine miles um, celebrating the, um, Bob Marley our way. Um, we will we will link with people who have trod with him, brethren, as we hear um, Bob and Lego mention about Dennis Brown. To you know, basically tell us, I mean, about Bob the man, the impact of his music on uh, Jamaica and the world at large. Because I mean, we know as a Jamaican myself who have been to a few places, the one person um, before 2008, the one Jamaican that everybody seemed to know, once you say you're a Jamaican, the one person was Bob Marley. Nowadays, I mean, people will say you seen Bolt as well, but Bob right. Marley And is, not in every nook and cranny. And not in every nook and cranny. And, and, and for different no reasons. Yes, Because yes. if you're not necessarily sports oriented, I mean, you would necessarily know about you seen right. But um, for, for his mission, you right, know... Let me see if we have Woodward. Mr. Bone? Yes, good morning. Okay, yeah. good, good morning, morning. How you doing, good my morning, brother? Good morning, yeah, I'm right here, man. Stephen good this morning. Yeah, man. Captain Crazy. <laughs> yes, Mr. Nicholas. Yes, Mr. Nicholas, man. <laughs> All is well, sir? Yes, bro. Yes, brother. Welcome, man. Nice to have you, man. All right. Yeah, we're, looking forward to, we're looking forward to nine miles. Uh, two yes. days of activities, and we're rolling out on the on the eighth. But you 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 will have your big thing on the on the sixth, I'm as I understand it, from right. almost from sun up to to sun up the next morning. Tell us yes, what, what what's happening up there. Yeah, man. It's gonna be the seventy birthday anniversary for Bob Marley. You know. Yes, and we're going to have a big event, like, on the 60th birthday. We're going to be having, like, 
artifact gully bob coming through. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, man. It's like, it's like we're bringing the excitement tonight, man, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> it sounds... <laughs> um, um, we understand you'll be having, like, bass at this year, be having drumming. Um, just yes. just um, yeah. give us an, an idea what are some of the things you'll be having, and, you know, if there's a cover charge or it's free, just tell us what, what to expect. Exactly. Well, in the morning, like from 9 o'clock, we have a tour that go on every day. And that tour is going to be going on still. I'm going to have a live band the whole day playing. And the, the tour guide will be performing their, their, their genre of music that they do every day, right through the day, including Captain Crazy myself. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And and then we're going to have the SRC playing from 10 o'clock until, like you say, when the other morning. You know okay. what I mean? Okay. All right, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. Right. And we, 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 we are negotiating with a, with a few artists right now to come and scheme, like Ibo Mar, you know, and a few more upcoming artists as well. All right. We're here, we, and I'm sure that next time we talk to you, we'll have some of those um, well-confirmed locked in, and we can start on um, the promotion of those who will be participating at that level. So is, exactly. is it going to be open to, to the general public, or this is for people yes. who would normally do the tour? No, it's going to be open for the general public and, and, and the six, yeah? Yeah, man. And and will the, the, these these activities will be beyond the gates? Or I mean, we know we'll be in like the, the parking lot. Will will yes, this um? It's gonna be inside. It's after gonna be inside. Actually, we're gonna be inside the parking lot. The, the show, the after show, gonna be in the in the parking lot. In the day, actually, we're gonna go up up by the beach shop on the tour. Go up to Bob Marley resting place where it's later rest. You know. Right. Okay. All right, and so yeah, that man, is so on the sixth, and that is a Friday. Yeah, that's the that, that's the Friday, the, the six. Yeah, six. Right. yeah, and it's a cover charge like three hundred dollars before twelve. I think five hundred after twelve. Right, and in terms of the eighth, now we're 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 broadcasting live from Nine Miles on the eighth, which is a Sunday. Right. Right. So we're going to be um, at Nine Miles in the car in the car park. Yes, we'll we'll be we'll be in the car park um, predominantly and. Um, while that is where the, the, the broadcast will, will happen, I mean, performances, right. interviews, mm -hmm. storytelling, drumming, just about yeah. everything, I mean, that you can, that, that we can use to relive the memories of the great, Bob legendary um, Bob Marley. And of course, the tour will still happen. I mean, people yeah. who want to come and experience the tour uh, on Sunday as well. Um, trust me, it's a very exciting tour. I, I got a bit of it the other day and, and yeah, you know, yeah. it's really something yeah, to see. It's, it's, sure, it's sure. you yeah. know, it's, it's something yeah, to see. Um, um, yeah, man, we're looking, we're looking forward to it, uh, Captain Crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. We're yeah, looking, man. We're Eh? Yeah, man, I want to big up you guys, man. You are doing a good job. IRFM is the number one station in the world, you know? Give thanks, my brother. Yeah, Give man. thanks. We're going to yes, roll yes, out the big, the big, the big, yes. the big bad shockwave. And we'll be yeah, there. And, and enforce yeah. it. And enforce yeah, it. Right, really. yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, it looked like we're carrying it. <laughs> All right, well, anyone. <laughs> but we're going to yeah. be rolling out the IRFM team. You know, broadcasting. Yeah. Running African will be broadcasting live from the birthplace of Robert Nestor uh, Marley. Bobby Marley. Yeah. On the eighth of, yeah, of February. It's We're, gonna be yeah, entertaining, man. it's gonna be spiritual, it's gonna be you know everything. Yeah man, yeah. Yeah, man a rough of all right, you know. Give thanks my brother. We'll see yeah, you, we'll man, talk to you I, later. Yeah? Yeah man, I big you know, I, I, I big up all my people in, in Jamaica and I'm I invite everybody to come out and have a good time on the sixth, you know? Yes. The sixth of yeah, the sixth of, of, of February, right there yeah. in Nine Miles, is the right. actual yeah, birthday. Seventieth, seventieth birthday yeah, of yeah, Robert man. Nestor Marley. Big celebration yeah, in Nine Miles. Yeah, man, I yeah. yeah. I want to give a big shout out to my boss Richie, you know, for doing this, and Ari as well, you know. Yeah, man, give thanks, give thanks. Yeah, yes, we want to give thanks to Ari and Richie as well for you know. Uh, yes, for man, man. to accommodate us up there. I refer, I refer, always there. You know what I mean? For us, you know, respect and give thanks, you know. All right, give thanks, my brother, crazy Thank Captain you, Crazy. Yes. Yes, <laughs> All right. yes, 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 man. Mr. Big up the self. Yeah, love, well, love. Mr. Wilbur yeah. Brown, Captain All right. Crazy. Yeah, <laughs> All right, Nick, that sound good. Definitely, I'm so good. I'm really, I'm really looking forward to all these activities that we have planned um, for for February Black History and Reggae, Reggae Month. Month. So, let, so, so one thing our listeners should know, and, and without any confusion, that there are two days of activities at Bob Marley, Definitely nine so. miles. One being put on by the, the, the foundation up there itself. The, the, the sixth, I mean, they normally have this 
stage show tour and and and, yeah. and all that i mean lots of excitement based on what i'm hearing mm-hmm. um base of this and stuff like that right. and the other one um rfm will be in the house live broadcast from 6 a.m on the Sunday, Sunday on the Sunday, right. we are. I mean, lots of reasoning, lots of interview. Um, we are, you know, this um, will give people a chance, you know, to tell not only Jamaica but the entire world. I mean, you know, about you know Bob himself, you know, re- re- relived moments with Bob and you know the impact Bob has on their lives and by extension Jamaica and the world at large. And it makes a difference when you go to the actual birthplace because we've been celebrating Bob for many years in terms of tribute to Bob Marley. Um, this is the first year that we're actually taking the tribute to his birthplace. Definitely. Um, Bob has history just all over in Kingston, in, in, in Nine Miles. You know, he, he has touched the lives of people in Clarendon down there. I mean, so, you know, we, we, we're just spreading the love all around, you know. Most definitely so. We're going to be talking to uh, Dave Tosh. You know, before we go to Peter Tosh, we are also celebrating on the 20th. Is it the 20th? 13th. The 13th, sorry. The 13th of February. February, yes. Jacob Miller. This will probably be the, um, the first real tribute, big tribute to, to Jacob Miller, who passed on uh, there in the 70s. I mean, we, we know hearing, incidentally, we know hearing, and, and we must say, I mean, this has nothing to do with it because this was planned before. We know hearing a new song that, you know, is really giving some tribute to, to, to Jacob oh, yes, Miller about yes. Chatty Chatty Yes, yes, I heard that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I mean, and it, it, yeah. in a circle. It's purely coincidence. Yeah, I you mean, know? you know, I, it's, it, the timing couldn't be better. Couldn't the timing be better. couldn't be better. I mean, yeah. and, and, and part of that whole celebration and tribute to Jacob Miller is going to be centered around one of our own colleagues here at Area Digital Friends, Chris. Digital Chris, who is actually the brother of Jacob Miller. And so it's, it's kind of an in search of series for, for Digi, you guys, <laughs> going in search of his brother, Jacob Miller. So Digi Chris will be broadcasting live from Manchester uh, on Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, yes. Um, in, in, in tribute to. Jacob Miller. Jacob Miller. And then on the, as we're talking about Peter And that Tosh. too, of course, um, that too, of course, Kabu, will, we will seek out people who have um, trod with Jacob Miller. We will seek out, um, you know, persons who can uh, tell us about Jacob the man, what he was like, what it was like, you know, running a boat with Jacob, what, it, what he was like, you know, mm-hmm. before, I mean, not many of Going us would have witnessed. Then. I mean, I, I remember when I was... Very young, I went. I think it was Carrefest at Jared Park. That's a long time ago in the seventies, yeah. um, where I watched Jacob Miller perform. I mean, I can I can hardly remember what the performance was. <laughs> but I'm wondering. Yeah, I can hardly remember what the performance. But I I remember Jacob Miller. My mother's maiden name is Miller. So mm-hmm. for some reason at that stage, yes. I believe you know Jacob Miller was my father. I know, and you still do actually. You still do. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> to watch uh, Jacob Miller was something. So so just just write these dates down because we're going to be talking about them as we go along. On the phone lines now, Dave Tosh, the son of Peter Tosh, and principal of the Belmont Academy, Mr. Raymond Rayon Simpson. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Dave and Rayon. Yeah, bless up, Andre. Respect. All right, Thanks Mr. Rayon Simpson, you there? Good morning, Andrea. Oh, good, 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 good to have you on the line. Good to have you on the line. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Mr. Simpson. Yes, I mean, is, yes. That, is that so, Nick? <laughs> yes, it is, it is. <laughs> Live and in living okay, color. Morning, okay. <laughs> all right, just look. Thank you for having us. Oh, man, we're very, mm-hmm. very, very happy to have you I on know the line. right now, you know, all those cursing pun and everything in, in, in Belmont, Westmoreland have been scoured and prepared. People already are look them lagwood and <laughs> pimento wood and all of that. I mean, this is a festival of festivals in Jamaica, you know. Uh, it, it, it's so nice if you have a, a spy in Belmont. Um. <laughs> no, but I mean, when I came down here and saw, I mean, I mean, we've been down here from inception, but when I saw what happened on the roadside and all of that last year, and Muta, who is a more traveled person than I am, you know, he had to say, only in Europe and those places he, he sees festivals like these where it's not about no big artists on stage. It's not about, I mean, everybody surrounding a stage. It's about people just going around, people just cooking, eating. I'm looking forward oh, to going to Nesbury. Last year, man, send me some Nesbury. I never work out so well, you know. I'm coming back. <laughs> 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 All right, 
<laughs> yeah, man, it is. It, it is really a festival. Yeah, and and and, and let me start with you, um, Mr. Simpson, principal of Belmont Academy, because we're start we're kicking things off uh, on Friday, uh, the twentieth, which is actually uh, we're going to be down there for the entire weekend. But Friday we're going to be at the Belmont Academy. Give us an idea, as much as you can, because we know we're still getting things together. Um, some of what we can expect from at Belmont Academy on on the Friday. What will the, stu the students be doing? What's the school's um, level of participation? Well, you know, um, last year we, we came on board and this year we decided that there was no way we could um, avoid coming on board this year. So even though um, the, the, the event on this Friday um, will be between the midterm break, we thought that it would be fit and appropriate that we still um, allow our participation to be had this year. Yes, yes. So um, this year uh, it is promised that a fantastic event will take place at Belmont Academy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in Belmont style, it's usually um, excellent. So, uh, the, we love that. In Belmont style, it's usually excellent. <laughs> <laughs> excellent is the highest form of rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> so the discussion yes. this year is around uh, some, some, some very um, innovative ideas. And yes. some very intriguing presentations from yes. some persons that you, you just yes. certainly couldn't get. In a different way. You know? In a different way. Yes. And, and they're going to have to hold their breath for this one because this is going to be big. Uh, definitely. Like, when really it's big. Year waves, I mean, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And and, and on that Sunday, we're broadcasting live um, on the on the Friday the twentieth um, from Belmont Academy. That will be DJ Sunshine. Uh, we'll be broadcasting live from there. Um, playing so the Andrew, now you tell them where in the world Sunshine will be. No, that, so where in the world Sunshine is going to be the week after that. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> but yes, yes. But where in the world is Sunshine on the twentieth of February? It's going to be at Belmont Academy. We're all going to be there. The team's going to be there. And I already spoke to Sunshine. I said, to her, Sunshine, you know." Um, you you might have to give a lecture to you know Peter Tosh. She said, "Yeah, man, we can't do that, man." <laughs> oh, yes, that would be, that would be something. That would be something because um, my students, um, in particular, you know, yes. are very, very um, interested in, in in DJ Sunshine. Yeah, well, you know, you but go. I think it is appropriate that we allow the public to know that the, this year event is not going to be unique just to the school yeah. or to schools. But it would be um, a, a, an event that would be open to the entire um, Jamaican public. Yes, yes. So uh, I think that is important that the public would know that. All right, definitely. And I'm, we're so happy that Belmont Academy and that you as a principal um, is really so visionary, you know, Mr. Simpson. We have to say that. We have to pause, stop a moment, and just to acknowledge we your might vision. Have him, you know. We might have a clone him. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really, it is. It, it's, very much. it's phenomenal. I, I, it yes. is important that we do um, things like this because you know Peter Touch is a homegrown hero. Yes. Um, and he he lived in Belmont, um, and the school is in Belmont. So you can't have a school um, in the community without the community being in the school. Definitely. You know? And it is also important for our students and the nation and a whole to see how this little community has really produced such an icon. And we must celebrate him because um, I think he remains the, the, the most ingenious and the most um, creative um, reggae ambassador that ever lived. Most so definitely. It's appropriate that we celebrate him in this way. Most definitely. So that date is, 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 a, is a 20th, it's February 20th, Nick. We are yes. at Belmont Academy. And you're going to hear much more about that as the week goes on across Iowa from about who will be delivering a, a very special lecture. And if all goes and to plan, I'm, I'm certain you'll need to extend the school, I mean, when, <laughs> when, when we roll out the plans. That is most definitely true. You hear that, Mr. Well, Simpson? I'm glad you say that. I'm glad you say that because any association with IRI is bound to, um, to create some traction. <laughs> and we indeed need an expansive space. <laughs> we look forward to that, eh? Why, well, Nick, you know, Nick, man, Nick. <laughs> I think Luther might be in trouble, you know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Luther, Mr. Luther. But, but can I? <laughs> Mr. Luther Buchanan, give us a call, now, please, sir. We're coming down there, sir. All right, so, Dave, on the Sunday now, uh, the, 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 the festival continues, and the massive festival at the Peter Tosh Memorial Gardens is happening on the Sunday. We're down there from, from 6 a.m. until you say when. Tell us what's so going on. So, we're not going in the night again for all those um, things that... Oh, let me forget, so we didn't come Saturday night. night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those steam fish and roast fish and all of those things we used to enjoy the night, well, the reason. Dave, I apologize. Yeah, it yeah, slipped yeah. me for a moment. That oh, that is 
stand for the public now. All right. No, it's just, it's, yeah. And you know, <laughs> well, you know it go. Right, so Dave, tell us what's happening. Yeah, well, basically, it's the, it, it's the, our celebration as usual for Peter Touch. It's, it's nothing new. It's just a continuation of the past and making it better mm-hmm. for this year. Mm-hmm. And and it's like that basically what we plan for do is have the family together just stay and chill out yes. and along with whoever wants to be here and have a vibes until the actual Sunday morning. Well Dave you know that we Dave, you know we usually mm-hmm. we usually pass you on the Saturday night because there's certain things that are that are required. You know, I have to sit mm-hmm. down there I don't smoke, but I have to take in some of the smoke. Um, uh-huh. you know, and the big bonfire on the beach. Yeah, beach. you know, I, I, and so on. And, and the bonfire, and a little bit of the fruits, uh-huh. and a little bit of the food, and whatever else happening in the yard there. So so a, yeah. big, a big yard for we from, from, from Saturday uh, night, uh, right? Uh, we'll we'll pass through. And then, uh-huh. all, you, and then all you're saying, into Sunday morning, of course. Yeah. Yeah, going on to Sunday morning, no, that's when everything really kick off the, the right way, you know, mm-hmm. the, the celebration is what it is. It's um, for me the biggest thing when I say I go on right now in terms of entertainment because I am so surprised within the few years that we, we, we start this mm-hmm. event here. I mean, there's a lot of, a whole heap, of, not even a lot, of, a whole heap of mm-hmm. tourists where actually people I say, yo, Dave, the thing I go on this year, I mean, I say, yeah, man, it's still I go on, man. I say, oh, because the people have booked them tickets already, you know. It's <laughs> yes, a it's tourist true. thing. I don't even know how come so much tourists know about it, but whatever I reckon doing, or we are doing, it's, it's, it's working. It's we are it's doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it, 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 it's what it is. Uh, the only difference is, like I say, this year, as you know, the event will be hosted by the Peter Touch Memorial Garden yes. and IRFN. Yes. Uh, uh, some of the changes we're plan to make is uh, in terms of funding, yes, I would like to see a more organized setting. So I intend to be selective this year instead of just having anything and everyone seen. So I will make sure say, a selective, decent group of funding is there where it can at least reputable people that well, people are interested. Now. People are interested in vending. Need to contact you urgently so that you can at least yes. um, organize the thing properly. You know, right, um, right. organize and the thing properly. Yeah, man. Same, same. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and like me say, it's it's growing and it's getting to be international. Where we're having tourists are coming and all of them things. So we mm-hmm. can't afford to a sites there because these people are actually hungry for Peter. From day one, you come here, you know that. Yes. That's why we continued because it wasn't even supposed to go on this long. But after the first day, we realized without identity yes. and standing up for your life. Yes, yes. So it is important that we celebrate our icon. Thank you um, so much. On for the day itself, mm-hmm. um, I just want the listeners to know and appreciate mm-hmm. that it is a school, and so at a school, um, there are certain kinds of expectations. Mm-hmm. I know that um, we don't really need to to to, to dwell on that too much mm-hmm. because. Um, the Jamaican public is very sensitive to us, these kind of things. Yes. So just come out and expect a fantastic day on Friday and on the other days, um, Saturdays and Sundays. I don't have to talk about the, um, the Saturday and Sunday. Um, and you notice I'm pluralizing because I I'm heard you. thinking ahead about this year. <laughs> <and> <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> I don't have to talk about Saturday and Sunday because yes. that is already etched in the minds of the people. Yes. But um, mm-hmm. the Friday event is usually... Um, confined to the schools and now we're expanding it to the nation and a whole. It's so open to we the invite politics. you to come. If, if you miss this, you're going to miss something because what we are planning is just something that is out of this world. We, you, know, you know what I'm seeing? Entire. You know what I'm seeing? Um, Dave and Mr. Sims, you're going to have to talk yeah. to your local hotels down there you know, because we are creating a weekend getaway in Belmont, um, Westmoreland. I mean, we are we are, so far, we are certain because last year we saw the, we assumed that the Caucasian looking people are from overseas. Yes. We spoke oh. with some of them and they mentioned California and Germany and all over the world. So we want, the, the, their, their need, there's a need for rooms down there. And we just want oh. the people who have those to, 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 you know, officially contact and come on board. And I mean, we can fill up down yeah, there. Yeah. I mean, down, down Belmont with these. 
And not even that. Uh, it's not even that with me if you just contact these because these are here. I don't think it's even enough. That's and what I'm what saying. I'm on the project is, and, and if it's creating more space in the, in the community because this, is, the, this, this event is an extension of the community. Yeah. It's not really an extension of the school, but it's the entire community involved. Yeah. And it affects the whole community, be it good or bad. I mean, I do get my fair share of complaints and all of this type of thing. And yes, I do get my fair share of good comments too. Yes, yes. See, so, yeah, but we, it's a development process and even the, the community at large is learning that, hey, we are here and we are here to stay and it's now time to grow. Of course. Jane, so, yes. we, 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 yeah. we, we're going to leave it there for, for now, uh, Dave and Mr. Simpson. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. Mr. Simpson, of course, is the principal of Belmont Academy. On the 20th, mm-hmm. Father, the 20th, we're rolling out uh, big time at Belmont Academy. What time are we starting at Belmont on Friday? We're starting at, uh, well, it go from 2 to 6. Right. 2, two to 6. Two. Um, we'll have... Um, as I said, we let people know more. I mean, right. as as we go along, we're what what to come, we're what to expect. Okay. DJ Sunshine will be there from two to six, and the exciting event that we're planning will roll out from two to six. But we let you know as and we go along, so you can start booking your room, booking your tent, booking whatever you need. And, and the date, know. and that date is the twenty. Plan a weekend for 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 for, for Belmont in West Milan from from, from February twenty to twenty two. All right. Oh, Thank oh. you so much, Mr. Simpson. Uh, Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, thanks, Andrea and Nick. Uh, okay, what so yeah. All right, we're looking forward uh, to those events in 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 West Milan on that on the weekend. So I said last weekend of uh, of the of, of February. Yes, yeah. um, well, almost because I mean um, February ends on a Saturday. Oh yeah, that's true. The twentieth. Right. Um, that Saturday we should be in Saint Thomas. Yeah, that Saturday, twenty eighth, we're in Saint Thomas. At, um, football in style yes well we're on the road you know. we're, we're on the road and yeah, i mean yeah. it's only 28 days in february but we are going to ensure that as much of jamaica as possible gets a piece of us you know so so we, right. we're, we're on the road it's, we're, it's we're, black history month it's reggae month uh come on board with us mr damien crawford you did not make it to the meeting in the time that you said you would uh we look forward to talk to we you can meet this morning still <laughs> <laughs> Where are we going to meet? <laughs> I mean... He's probably sleeping after Rebel Salute. After Rebel Salute. All right. Probably he's still at the venue uh, meeting and greeting from his stories in portfolio. So, you I never mean, know. You he know. might just drive by. But, but Nick, um, a, a, a month of uh, activities as we celebrate, IRFM celebrates 25 years. Uh, also, February looking... We, al- we almost missed a very important part in our own celebration. 25 years of looking out for the interests of people of African descent. Um, you know, letting Irie... You should, you should pat yourself on the shoulder, Irie. You go right ahead and pat yourself on the shoulder, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes. before, before Irie FM, you did not know that the black race did anything good in history. I mean, it was all negative and all that. I mean, not, but quite, I true, not quite true. Well, but we, but we plan yeah. understand what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I, I am an Irish person. I mean, yes. you know, you you. It was you. I grew up believing it was a sin to play a reggae song on a Sunday. Yes. I, you know. Yes. And it, it didn't matter the lyrics of the other songs that were being played. No, it is true because when, when Clyde McKenzie told me that we we're going to play reggae on Sundays on Irie, I I looked at him wide eyed and shocked. Yeah. And one of the things I've always looked at with reggae is when you compare the lyrics with some other some other songs, regardless of what they're saying, regardless of the promiscuity they are encouraging, the adultery or whatever they are encouraging, they are fine. Yes, but if especially reggae, if they are country and western. <laughs> hmm. But if a reggae song just say, love me forever, yeah. just the beat makes it Jolene, a Jolene, Jolene, <laughs> please don't take my man, even though you can't. Nick, I'm going to wrap up here. <laughs> Bottom line coming up. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Nick, and we'll hear much more it's about a pleasure. Yes, across we'll definitely be back. Yeah, looking forward to it, man. Give thanks, Nick, as usual. Appreciate it. What you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself, and what you think of yourself depends on what you know of yourself, and what you know of yourself depends on what you have been told. All right, it's time now for the bottom line. The bottom line is that I am not Charlie. I am not Charlie in any language. I am Africa. I am Nigeria. I am Ghana. I am Kemet. I am Ethiopia. I am Africa. One Africa. I am not Charlie. 
And as outraged as I have been over the brutal slaying of a 12 journalists, four civilians and one police officer in France on June uh, earlier this month, I was even more outraged when I witnessed the presidents of Mali, Niger, Gabon, Togo, Benin and Senegal in tight embrace with the presidents of France, Israel, who continue to build concentration camps, Germany and other European countries chanting Jesri Charlie while thousands of bodies of Nigerians litter the streets of Baga after they were slaughtered on the same weekend by Boko Haram, the very same day. The bottom line is that on the same day that the 17 Europeans were viciously murdered by cowards, whose aim, it appeared, was to silence journalists and kill freedom of speech. On that same weekend, some 2,000 Nigerians were brutally murdered by terrorists in Nigeria. Terrorists claiming to be Muslims. Terrorists underscoring their plan to create a full Islamic state in parts of Nigeria and to impose a stricter form of Sharia law across Nigeria, which is a split between a majority Muslim north and a mostly Christian south. The bottom line is that on that same day of the atrocities in France, the attackers, Boko Haram, sped into a Nigerian town with grenade launchers, their gunfire and explosions shattering the early morning calm. On that same day, terrified residents scattered into bushes in Baga town and surrounding villages. The gunmen unloaded motorcycles from their trucks and followed in hot pursuit. On that same weekend, Nigerian residents hid under scant brush. Bullets pierced them. Some sought refuge in their homes. They were burnt alive. Many who tried to cross into neighboring Chad drowned while they tried to swim through Lake Chad. On that same day, by the time the weapons went quiet, local officials reported death tolls ranging from hundreds to as many as 2,000 people and still counting. The bottom line is that there were bodies everywhere. Nigeria had become a burial ground, even while African leaders and Africans everywhere applauded French President Francois Hollande when he declared that the global outpouring of solidarity that France had seen indicated to him that France had become the capital of the world. France had become the capital of the world and Nigeria was a burial ground. That was January 3, 15 days ago. Nine days later, bodies still littered the roads in the area, even while African presidents marched in France in solidarity with the French and the 17 Europeans who were just as brutally murdered by cowards. The bottom line is that the January massacre of over 2,000 Nigerians was the deadliest massacre by Boko Haram in Nigeria to date. The bottom line is that Boko Haram has terrorized northern Nigeria regularly since 2009, attacking police, schools, churches and civilians and bombing government buildings. The group's brutal tactics have shocked and stunned the world. It has kidnapped students, including more than 200 schoolgirls who were abducted in April and still remain missing. Where are our girls? Bring back our girls. The bottom line is that on Saturday, January 3, just a day before the African leaders checked themselves into France and locked arms with European mourners, Boko Haram strapped explosives to a 10-year-old girl, detonated and blew her to pieces at a crowded, crowded marketplace in Nigeria, killing at least 20 people. All this while Africans, African leaders, African presidents... Black people all over the world chanted and tweeted, Je suis Charlie. The bottom line is that I am not Charlie. I am African, Nigerian, Ethiopian, Ghanaian, Malian, Kimetian. I am one Africa. The scale of the early January attack, the deaths of hundreds, thousands, defies belief. I am not Charlie and cannot be Charlie because even though we condemn the attack on free speech and abhor the killing of journalists, I am first and foremost African 
in a global environment in which all things are not equal. I am not Charlie and cannot be because I am still questioning why it took the murder of only 17 Europeans to get the world and most of its presidents, even Israel, to rally in their millions, 3.7 million and hardly an acknowledgement in that rally or elsewhere of the over 2,000 massacred in Nigeria on the same weekend. I am not Charlie. I cannot be Charlie. Because while President Netanyahu marched in Paris, African migrants are locked up in brutal conditions in, in concentration camps in Israel, just asking for refuge, just for, just because they ask for refuge in the so-called Holy Land. I am not Charlie and cannot be Charlie. Because while President Hollande promised an end to terrorism, France has presided over decades of economic and social terrorism over Haiti and still refuses to repay the 150 million gold francs Haiti was forced to pay over to France for so valiantly winning its freedom from the terror of slavery. I am not Charlie. I cannot be Charlie because I am witness to the phenomenon of 44 presidents from 44 different countries around the world marching in solidarity in a show of unity and defiance against terrorism after 17 Europeans were murdered while thousands of bodies of Africans killed by the same kind of terrorism which killed the 17 have been left to rot in the streets of Baga in Nigeria, children of a lesser god. The bottom line is that I am not Charlie and cannot be Charlie. Not after bearing witness to the presidents of Mali, Niger, Togo, Benin, Gabon and Senegal, all former colonies of France, tightly locked in embrace in the embrace of death, deception and betrayal, while the mangled bodies of their African brothers and sisters strewn the streets of Nigeria. I am not Charlie. I am not Charlie because even while the six African presidents mourn for 17 Europeans, Mali, Niger, Kenya, Libya, Cameroon, Chad, Egypt, Sudan, Burkina Faso, Senegal, and a whole host of other African countries continue to be held hostage by terror merchants from Al-Shabaab and Ansar Bayat al maqdis to Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb and the movement for oneness and jihad in West Africa. I am not Charlie. The bottom line is that the marches in Paris and other European cities last Sunday were also in favor of liberty and the freedom of opinion and expression. These are freedoms which are captured in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights contained in the Charter of the United Nations, which I will march for on any given day. I do not condone the killing of journalists or anyone uh, through terror or otherwise, but I am not Charlie. I am African, black, Shibok, Baga, Nigerian. Syria, Ethiopia, I cannot march in Paris. That's the bottom line. For today, 